color clashing is in, crochets are trending, and Y2K fashion is back in for who knows what reason. But your favorite drinks never go out of style with Drizzly, the number one app for alcohol delivery. Drizzly has you covered with the largest selection of beer, wine, and spirits delivered in under 60 minutes. They won't judge you for drinking last season's cocktails or mocktails if you prefer non-alcoholic drinks like me. And maybe you can't be talked out of participating in the 2000s revival, but at least they can get you out of wearing those jelly platforms to the corner store. With Drizzly, it's easier than ever to find a timeless classic or shake it up with something fresh. Need something special to impress the trendsetter who has it all? Give the gift of drinks with Drizzly because you can't buy wine in the wrong size. It's a no-brainer. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. With the Kroger Plus card, it's easy to get lower than low prices for the win. Earn fuel points on every purchase and save up to a dollar a gallon at the pump. The Kroger Plus card. All you do is win. Big, big savings. Sign up now at Kroger.com and start saving. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Fuel restrictions apply. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Settling is not an option for me. Everything I desire is already mine. What if you can have it all? <laughs> because every day is for the girls. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of For the Girls. I'm your host, Victoria Alario. And today we are back on regularly scheduled programming, back to Mondays. It's crazy because I have three new episodes out right now within like the past four days because I did just uh, publish two new episodes on Friday the 6th. So I did a whole long Q&A to catch up on a ton of questions, a ton of Dear Victoria segments, um, sorry, submissions. And so I did Q&A part one, Q&A part two. They both went live on Friday, January 6th. So check out those two episodes. If you have not yet, there are so many different questions, all different like uh, categories. It's not just dating. So anyone and everyone can listen. They apply to all different types of scenarios. But now we're back. On Mondays, it is now January 9th, we're here. So I have a lot of content out for you guys over the past, you know, few days. And today we're gonna get back into talking about business, but you could also apply this to any area of life because this like topic, this idea for today's episode came to be actually from a a comment that someone left me on a TikTok video. And in the video, I was talking about a dating scenario, which I could explain to you to just give you the context of where this comment came from. But we're not going to like get into dating today. We're going to get into some business and just productivity and getting shit done and all your goals. And this could even apply in like other ways, not necessarily you being a business owner, but just you being someone who can get shit done personally or professionally. So the video that I had posted on TikTok was me saying what my biggest turn on is in a man. And that is being a problem solver. Like do not provide me with problems if you do not have a solution attached to it. I was basically saying that I love a guy who's just like, I got it. I'll handle it. I get shit done. I take care of it. No worries. I'm like to me, the type of guy that I'm into is the type of guy that I don't even have to use my damn brain around like I can just exist and not have to worry about anything because you can handle it because for me I have a lot of masculine energy especially when it comes to my professional life and so all day long I'm solving problems all day long I'm in my masculine I'm working I'm hustling I'm taking action I'm getting shit done and yeah when it comes to like the type of guy I'm interested in dating I don't want to be that person for him I want him to be that person for me because I want to be able to be in my feminine since you know I do more than enough in my masculine anyway that's what I was making that video about and that video was inspired because of the dimwit that I have now blocked who is 40 years old and acts like a four-year-old so he we had plans we went on a date and from the jump like I had told him that I wasn't sure what time I was going to really be home it was tentative I knew that I was going to be out during the day So, you know, I know that you want to go out that night. I know you want to make plans, but I'm just letting you know that I don't really know when I'll be home. And he made the plans for 7. He made the reservation for 7 p.m. So around like 5 p.m., I ended up 
telling him like, hey, can you push back that reservation because I'm not going to be home in time to get like, you know, get ready and be there for, to be ready to get picked up for seven o'clock. And now let me ask you guys something, even though you can't answer, but answer it in your head, even though I can't hear your response. If you were in charge of a reservation, you booked a reservation, say it's you and your friends, whatever, you're the one handling it and you need to push it back. What would you do? Think right now what you personally would do if you had to push back a reservation. I know my audience and I know that you are all competent and smart women and girls And I think that you would do exactly what I would do. The very first thought that came to my head would be to call the restaurant. Hi, I have a reservation for two people at 7 p.m. Can we push it back to 8? Right? You know what this guy replies to me? He said, I just looked online to see what reservations they have and they don't have anything open for 8. Like, no shit, Sherlock. It's after 5 p.m. the day of, which means... You think that they're going to have open reservations for the day of two hours prior? Like, obviously not. Call up the place and ask them that question. Like, of course they don't have availability on their website right now for tonight. But that's not the point. Call up. You have a reservation. Like, duh. Like, isn't that such an easy solution? That's what I would do. So now if you're telling me, oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't see any reservations available. Like, ew. Literally, ew. If I am presenting you with a problem, I, I, what I would like in a guy is to be the type who would say, oh yeah, I'll call right now. I really don't think that's asking for too much. Maybe I'm fucking crazy. I think I'm self-aware. Maybe I'm fully lacking self-awareness and maybe I'm genuinely asking for too much, but I really don't think I am. Because if that were me making reservations for me and my friends and someone wrote to me saying, Vic, I'm not going to make it in time for the reservation. Can you push it back? I would pick up the phone and call. I just like can't. Like I do not like guys that I have to provide solutions for. Anyway, sorry, I'm venting now at this point. I should save this for a, a FaceTime with my friends. But the point is, Aside from the fact that he's blocked, that's not the point. The point is, this comment came on that video. The username is Jennifer M two two three two. She's not a content creator. Just want to give her credit. And she said, "Yes, quit doing the bare minimum. Quit doing something just to say you tried. Don't quit until it's done. Being lazy sucks." And I love how she said, "Quit doing," and then she put quotes, quote quote something, just to say you quote quote tried and that shit like oh my god that was so good I've been coaching women in business for years for five years now and I've listened to girls over and over and over make excuses and tell me that something isn't for them or something isn't working because they did this thing oh I did this or oh I did that oh I reached out to that person oh I posted this they're very 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 quick to give themselves credit for the one thing that they did just to say that they tried, but then they quit. And then they consider themselves a failure. And I have tons of video, you know, episodes and content where I talk about failure and I talk about business, but I still don't think people fully understand because like I said, this doesn't only have to go toward business. It could go toward literally anything in life, but people quit too soon. So the only thing that makes you a failure is the fact that you quit and you end it on a low. So when you when you fail at something or you don't succeed, like you don't get the desired result, and then you quit, yeah, you failed. And that's the end of that. But if you don't quit until it's done, until you achieve the desired result, instantly you're not a failure. Instantly. And the only thing that you did different was to keep going was to persevere until you found a solution to the problem. You said, listen, this problem is not going down without getting solved, so I'm going to keep going until it's solved. Whether it be in sales, whether it be in getting a promotion, whether it be in your personal life and your fitness and your productivity around the house, like no matter what it is, 
If you're staring a problem in the face and then you just do quote quote something just to say you tried and that doesn't work, why aren't you continuing to throw more stuff at the wall until it sticks? Not everything is the solution to a problem, right? So if there are five different options of something you could be doing and you tried one thing, it didn't go the way you planned and then you gave up right away, how are you ever going to find solutions for that problem? There were four more options. There were four more ways to go. But the, the problem is people want to see the solutions in front of them. They want to see the answers. It's like cheating on a test. Like imagine that you're in school and there's a test in front of you and it's a multiple choice thing. Maybe this isn't the way that people take tests, but I'm just trying to go with some, just follow along here. You're looking at the multiple choice stuff. And say that you could do go process of elimination and you circle letter A, you circle the first answer. It's wrong. And then you look at the teacher and you're like, what's the right answer? And she's like, Victoria, I can't give you the answer. I'm the teacher. I'm the one who sits here and grades the assignment. I can't tell you. You got to try again. And then you circle letter B. Wrong. Looking at the teacher, hello, I'm trying here. What's the answer? Well, you got C, D, and E still left. You got to keep trying. And you're like get, getting frustrated because you failed once. You Maybe you failed twice. So you're falling down. But you know that saying, fall down seven times, get up eight? Hello, we've heard that our whole lives. Why are we not applying it to anything and everything that we do? There are solutions to problems, even if they're not staring you directly in the face. You might just have to work a little bit harder to figure them out. You might just have to go the long route. People try to make shortcuts, but you can't shortcut success. You might be seeing people on TikTok getting overnight success or these people who are just growing like crazy and you're like, but I made 50 videos. Well, whatever video you made isn't hitting the proper, you know, direct audience that you're looking for. It's not getting that right demographic. You know what I mean? So obviously you need to fix some, fix it. You need to change something up. If something is proven to not be right, if something is proving every single day to not work, why are you continuing to do something that doesn't work? You have to throw things at the wall until they stick. And the only way to ever see the desired result with anything in life is by not quitting until it's done. And this is why I talk so much about failure and I want people to understand that failure, sorry, that success is not linear. Success is not linear. That means that success is not one straight road from the bottom to the top. Success is not one straight line that's just like, all right, started from the bottom, now let's work our way up, and then you're just up at the top and you're just there. Success is a huge zigzag, up and down. Imagine like being in the hospital, don't imagine yourself, but imagine like Grey's Anatomy. Just picture something that's not real. I don't want anyone to get like creepy thoughts right now. Imagine you see the hospital, the heart monitor, and it's going up and down. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down. Because the heart's going faster, then it's going slower, then it's beating more, then it's beating less. Beep, 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 right? That is success. It is not linear. It is not one straight line. It is up and down and up and down and up and down. But the difference between someone who's who is successful and accomplishes things is that they keep going they don't go the lazy route they're not trying to shortcut anything you know what happens when you shortcut things you become a one-hit wonder and oh one-hit wonder overnight success is almost never sustainable it's almost never going to give you the long-term results that you're looking for You know how they say things like a a slow burn? Like, oh yeah, it was a slow burn. Yeah, because you got to build little by little every day. Small, consistent habits that create big, life-changing results. And the only way to see those results is by being disciplined with those habits. 
I still to this day always get asked how I stay motivated. Guys, I have podcast episodes out about it, literally titled Discipline versus Motivation. I say it all the time, anytime that I talk about motivation. I am not a highly motivated individual. Let's start there. I am a disciplined individual. And there's a quote by Jim Rohn that says, Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. And if you discipline yourself, those goals become real, true accomplishments. But the only way to achieve the big goals is by having small, broken down action steps and habits. And one of the best ways to create consistent habits every single day would be by making your habits not like making a like almost like a to-do list that's not overwhelming so if your goal is to build a business or to sell a product something of that sort and you're like well I need to get into the habit of reaching out to people posting on social media on my story, creating TikToks, creating um, content on Canva, picking up the phone and calling people, hosting events, all of these different things. Those should not be on your to-do list all at once every single day because that's unsustainable. That is overwhelming. Nobody gets all of that done in a day. And even though those are all things that you certainly need to do to see the desired result, they are not things that you need to do all in one day. So create your to-do lists each day or each week, whatever, with realistic habits that you can get done daily. So if you know that you need to reach out to people, plan to reach out to five people. If you know that you want to get up a story on Instagram, plan to get up one story. If you know that you want to make a TikTok, plan to get up one TikTok. Like whatever it is, just to make sure that you're doing a little bit every single day because success is not about what you've done once. Consistency is literally about what you do every single day. Success is not about the one time you had up a really good story or you posted a really good TikTok that went viral. Success is consistently viral TikToks and consistently good stories and consistently um, strong outreach with good sales messages, whatever it might be. And that's just one example. Not everyone's in sales. Not everyone is trying to run a business. Whatever it might be, apply this to your scenario. And what's important to do too is always reward yourself. I'm big on rewarding myself. Once I work a lot for the day, I let myself take a nap or I let myself watch an episode of my show. I like to reward myself because it allows me to not feel resentment toward my daily routine because I have lived with resentment toward my daily routine where I sat at the computer for 12 hours straight and never got up, never let myself do anything else. And I called that self-discipline. And to a degree, it was true because that is what discipline is, getting your goals accomplished, right? Getting done your tasks for the day. But because there was no reward, there was no downtime, there was a strong burnout, a really strong burnout. And so while discipline is very important, it's also important that you allow yourself to be a human being with personal needs, which include rest and entertainment and relaxation and fun and recreation, whatever it might be. This is it. This is the year. Enough dreaming about growing my business online. It's time to get serious about selling in my style, as big as I want to grow, because there's nothing I can't do. It's time to get Shopify and take my business to the next level. Whoa, someone's ready to take on the new year. Oh, oh, I thought I was talking to myself there. But heck yeah, 2023 is my year. That's not your average resolution. That's a revolution. It's It's a a new New year's Year's revolution. revolution. 
Start selling with Shopify to join the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Packed with industry-leading tools ready to ignite your growth, Shopify gives you complete control over your business and your brand. From templates that make site design simple to customizations that let you grow at your pace. This is possibility powered by Shopify. Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash free 22. That's shopify.com slash free 22. Go to shopify.com to start your new year's revolution today. So self-discipline doesn't necessarily have to mean torture, but it just means I know what my goals are. They mean this much to me that I am not willing to quit until they're done. But also as a person, I need to fuel myself. I won't feel good tomorrow. I won't get shit done tomorrow if I burn myself out today. So let yourself rest, but also don't get carried away. So if your goal, if this is like a fitness thing, I know a lot of people are on a fitness journey, a weight loss journey, a muscle up, tone up journey, whatever it might be, especially now it's the start of the new year. That tends to be a lot of people's resolutions, but a lot of people are really working on their health and their fitness. While I am not one for like, pushing and promoting diet culture because quite frankly I don't I don't do well with diets myself I will say your reward can't counteract your work so if you're disciplined all day with a specific diet if you're on a specific meal plan don't ruin it with McDonald's for dinner not to say that you can't ever cheat of course you can like I just said I'm not even one for um a diet but At the end of the day, health is the goal, right? So if you're counteracting the health and you're saying, okay, I'm doing my protein shake for breakfast and I'm having my nutrients and my protein and I'm having my eggs and my avocado and then I'm having my grilled chicken and my veggies and I'm doing this and that. And then for dinner, I'm having a McChicken with a chocolate milkshake and a large fry you might as well have not done the diet at all. You might as well have not done any of that. It doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter how great you ate in the morning and the afternoon if by dinner you ruined it with terrible, terrible, toxic, unhealthy foods. I'm not saying you can never have a piece of cake. By all means, eat the cake. But be for real. You know that that McDonald's or you know that that toxic fast food is going to counteract all the hard work that you're doing. So if you have a business goal or a social media related goal that requires posting every day, it's probably not in your best interest to go five days without posting. Oh, I was so tired. I just couldn't do it. You can rest and still manage to post every single day. There is zero excuses for not posting. For starters, you can do literally one story or one video, whatever it is, and it does not need to take more than 30 minutes out of your day, even on your busiest days. But say that your day is so busy that you don't even have 30 minutes to create any sort of content at all, then you need to come prepared. And on the days that you do have the time to create the content, then you need to batch content. Everyone knows their schedule. Everyone knows their life. So if you know that on Tuesdays you're so so slammed at work and there's no way you can get on TikTok and make a video. There's no way that you could get on Canva and create stories to post for your social media story. Then why on Sunday night are you not batching content and creating three videos that you could spread them out and tons of stories that you could spread them out? There's no reason why you should skip a day of posting. If that is your goal is to grow your following or to grow your sales and to increase your business and your social media presence and success, then why would you take rewards that counteract your goals? That's not even a reward at that point. That's self-sabotage. That is the opposite of discipline. That is self-sabotage. So your rewards should only benefit your habits. So like I said, I'll rest or I'll watch TV. I'll let myself relax for a little bit. And doing that allows me to feel better and refuel it gives my body more energy. It gives my mind more like, it like uh, what, what's the word? Like it, it removes stress. Like I think that entertainment and rest and things like that let my mind just like feel good, bring some peace, less clutter, less stress in my head. And when I get back to working after that, 
I'm all fired up and I'm ready to go. So make sure with whatever rewards you are giving yourself that they support the best version of you. They support your goals, your needs, and your desires. All of those rewards go hand in hand with the exact mission that you have and the exact life that you are focusing on building. Now to talk a little bit more about self-sabotage, let's get into a Dear Victoria submission that I got. Dear Victoria, I listened to your podcast, Confidence Will Change Your Life. A lot of it was about energy and I self-reflected that I do not reflect positive energy. There's always doubt, especially when I'm truly catching feelings for someone. I'm turning 22 this month, going back to school for business. I have two jobs and I'm hitting the gym, but I feel like my energy is closing doors and relationships. How do I change or transition this? This is self-sabotage. All that doubt that you have, it may partially be some anxiety, but at the same time, it is really just you sabotaging yourself from the good things. And what's happening is that you're in your own head and you're almost telling yourself certain things don't belong to you or you're psyching yourself out. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like anytime that something is good, you just expect it to go away. You don't expect it to last. It's almost like some twisted version of like trust issues and commitment issues. Not saying that you don't trust anyone or that you can't commit to anything, but sometimes when we're so used to things not working out, then we develop trust issues just generally in life. It gives us just generally a negative outlook on life. Like nothing is ever dedicated. Nothing is ever committed. Nothing ever lasts permanently. It's very just like in and out, one foot in, one foot out. Nothing is ever long term. And I was just talking about this with one of my confidence coaching clients and she had texted me saying like, I'm seeing somebody and he's really great, but I know I'm going to blow it because I'm just so in my head and there's so much doubt and he's getting frustrated with her. And so I told her what you don't realize is that you're powerful. People think that being powerful only means being positive. And that's not true. We are so powerful that no matter what we say or do, it's going to translate into our reality. So if you're telling yourself right now with this guy that it's not going to last because nothing else ever does, then guess what? It's not going to last. And then you're going to turn around and say, look, told you so, knew that was going to happen. Another one bites the dust. So now you're like, you're, you're self-sabotaging so hard that you're making these things come to an end. You're closing the doors. You're closing the relationships on your own accord because you told yourself that it's not going to last. So then eventually he gets sick of your shit. He walks away. He's like, well, I don't, I'm not going to spend a life trying to convince you that I'm here to stay. So I'm out. Like I want to be with someone who can reciprocate my effort and my energy. And you're just over here in your own head expecting this to end and looking for the exit sign you're like turning around looking for the big red letters that say exit so you could just find your way out instead of getting hurt by somebody so when I say that we are so 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 powerful what I mean is that your perception determines your reality so your whole entire life the entire trajectory of your life has come to be based on what you've told yourself it is and what it isn't So the friends that you have in your life are the friends that you've told yourself are for you. And the people that are not your friends that you don't spend time with are people that you've told yourself are not for you. The guys and the relationships that have not worked out, you knew that they weren't going to work out. You said it a million times, no matter how much you liked him, you're like, this is never going to last. This is never going to whatever. So every single thing that you have or don't have was based on the perception that you had of it. So the way that you perceive something determines the way it's going to go. So if you are talking to a guy, like you said, there's always doubt, especially when I'm truly catching feelings for someone, that's where your energy is going. It's going toward the doubt. There's one, like, there's, it's one thing if you have a little bit of doubt, but you're more so optimistic and you're positive and you're like, this is going great. 
I see myself with this guy. Things are going great. Things are working out for me. This is really good. I'm really excited. I'm really happy. I'm really optimistic. If your energy was that way, this would be a different conversation. But like you said, I'm self-reflecting and I'm realizing I don't reflect positive energy. I reflect negative energy. That's because you're putting all your power into your doubt and your negative thoughts. So yes, you are energetically closing doors and closing relationships because where you're putting your energy and where your energy goes, everything flows. So when your energy is so focused on doubt and your behaviors support that energy, your behaviors support your doubt, then that's what's going to come up around that relationship. That's what's going to surround the relationship and it will come to an end. So instead, you need to shift to the positive. So think like, I'm optimistic, I'm excited, I'm eager to see where this is going to go. And do things that you want to do for him or for her. Don't be afraid of being too much. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. Wear your heart on your sleeve. Go for it. Do the things that support your positive thoughts, not the self-sabotaging and not the toxic behaviors. Don't pull away because you're afraid of getting hurt. Don't run away from your feelings. Lead with love. Go all in. Who cares? Realistically, what is the worst that can happen? You can scare them away? How? The only thing you can scare away by being real is something fake. You can't scare off what's meant to you. I know that's a cliche, but it's 100% true. Cliches aren't labeled as cliches because they're false. Cliches are labeled as cliche because they're so damn true. Everyone says it all the time. You cannot lose something that is meant to be. You cannot lose a product of the universe. So if you're too much for someone, then they're just looking for less. Let them go find less. It doesn't mean that you lost anything. It just means that this wasn't for them. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they lost anything either. It just wasn't what they were looking for. So that's why they're going to keep it moving elsewhere. And that's exactly what you should do. You need to put your mindset into the abundant mindset, into the abundant mind frame. And life gets so much better when you do shift your energy into abundance. Lately, shit, that has been me. With guys, it's like a freaking revolving door. When one thing ends, another one walks right in, right on time. It's literally like I could just imagine myself sitting at a bar where there's like a swinging door back and forth and I'm sitting at the bar and one guy comes in and he's talking to me and we have a drink and he's really nice and whatever, it's great. And then our time's up and he leaves. All right, I got to go home. All right, bye, I'm going to stay. He goes out, another guy walks back in, sees me, sits down. Hey, how are you? Like, this is not anything that happened in real life but this is how I'm imagining things we sit we chat he gets me a drink we have a good time we laugh all right time for me to go home I got a long day tomorrow all right no worries he walks out another one comes right back in that is genuinely how my life has been every single time that a guy comes in and I'm like okay maybe this is it and he leaves I meet somebody else somebody else comes back in And if I wasn't thinking abundantly, I'd be getting frustrated all the damn time. Why is nothing working out? But you know how I said I blocked that that 40-year-old? Like we went out earlier in the week. And then by Thursday, I blocked him. And I had a date with somebody else Thursday night. Like that's how abundant my life is because that's where my energy goes. I do not stress one because there are so many. There are so many more options. Like literally that's part of the reason why I am so easy with blocking people. A lot of people are like, I can never. Like what if he texts you? What if he calls you? Like what if he apologizes? What if he does? I don't give a shit. It doesn't matter to me. I don't want somebody who I have to wait for apologies and I have to wait for them to come back and realize that they've messed up. That's just not what I'm looking for. And I'm not saying that I'm looking for perfection either. Things happen. Miscommunication happens. But there's a difference between someone with audacity and like I should be thankful for them doing literally just anything and settling for the bare minimum 
And someone who, you know, there was just a little miscommunication. Maybe we communicate differently. Maybe we have different love languages. Like, that's different. I'm okay with communicating through confusing situations with people. But I am not interested in people who, like I said, want to be rewarded for the bare minimum. It's just simply not what I'm looking for. And so when he was very rude to me on Thursday, like legitimately an asshole to me, I blocked him. I really don't care. By by five hours later, I was on a date with somebody else and having a much better time. Like, it truly doesn't matter to me. So you got to just go into everything thinking like, what's the worst that can happen? I'm going to go all in. I'm going to wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm going to show my true colors. I'm going to make myself known, make my standards known, show the type of woman that I am, how much love that I have to offer, how much love I want to receive back. And if I don't get it, then that situation is not for me. But no worries because something bigger and better is coming. So your energy has to be focused on open doors and plentiful relationships. And that is that. And that is what we have for this week. And I am so excited for this Saturday, January 14th, because we have our Hoboken, Jersey City boxing class for my For the Girls community that is local over here. I can't can't wait to do more events. I can't wait to meet more of you guys. If you are coming this Friday, make sure that you're wearing all black. That is the vibe. We want to get good videos, good photos, all black, head to toe. We want to be cohesive. We want cute content. So if you're going to be at the boxing class, make sure to be wearing all black. And if you are not coming, but you are local, stay tuned for more events to come in the future. And as per usual... If you're not working with me in confidence coaching, click the link in the show notes to inquire about private coaching. And if you have not gotten on the wait list for my group confidence coaching, the link to that is also in the show notes for you too. So thank you girls so much for listening. Until next time, girls.